Okay, so in the last video we took a look at how we're going to set up that twist control for our leg. In this video, let's jump over into Houdini and actually get that implemented. So I'm going to jump over into Houdini. And the first thing I want to do is set up that null that's going to give us the orientation of our twist axis with the positive x in terms of its local orientation facing out towards the front of the leg. That null is going to be a child of our upper leg as discussed over on the whiteboard such that it inherits some of the orientations of that leg and then aims down at the end effector, aims down at our IK handle for the leg. So I'm going to create a null that is a child of our upper leg. I'm going to middle click on the output of the upper leg and branch into a null. And I'm going to rename this to L underscore leg twist aimer. Of course, we want this to aim down at our IK handle. So I'm going to set the look at to be our L underscore leg IK handle and accept. Now we want the orient up vector in this case to be X. We want the orient up vector to be our world x, to stick out in x. So let's set our up vector equal to x. If we change to take a look at the orientations that that has now caused, we can see that we have our x facing out towards the front of the leg, negative x to the back of the leg. We have z facing up and negative z pointing down at our end effector just as discussed on the whiteboard so now that we have that in place we can use z axis of this orientation for our rotations and we can use the x axis of this orientation to offset our pivot point back to the correct location so i'm going to go ahead delete that temporary null we do have our leg twist aimer still in place so I've got that leg twist aimer in place. Now we can go ahead and create another null that inherits that orientation, grabs that orientation, but is a child of the lower leg such that we are positioned relative to the knee. So I'm going to branch off of our lower leg, create a new null, and I'm going to name this null to L underscore leg twist underscore orientation. So I want this to be a child of our lower leg and I want to grab the rotations, grab the orientation of our leg twist aimer. That means I'm going to change our rotations based on my current rotation, which I know is relative to L underscore lower leg. And I want to change that to the L underscore leg twist aimers rotations. That means I'm going to use an origin expression. Who am I relative to? I'm relative to the L underscore lower leg. Who do I want to grab the transformation parameter of? I want to grab that of the leg twist aimer. So L underscore leg twist aimer. And what parameter, what transformation parameter am I interested in? I'm interested in the rotate in X. I'm going to double click control C to copy that. Paste that into Y, change that over to rotate Y. Paste that into Z, change that over to rotate Z. And you can now see that indeed... Our orientation has aligned itself with the orientation of our leg twist aimer. Again, to see the orientation caused by a look at, I do need to look at a child of that node. So you can see there's the orientation caused by our look at, and there's the exact same orientation down on our knee uh, null, on our leg twist orientation null. So now that we have that orientation, we can go ahead and we can offset in front of the knee, and that is the positive x direction. Now, of course, we need to rotate first and then offset a positive x direction. Otherwise, positive x, if we were to branch another null off of our lower leg, we can see positive x sticks out to the side. If we were to translate, then rotate, translating in x will translate us out to the side of the leg. What we want to do is rotate and then translate in x. So we can change our transformation order over to translate, scale, rotate, or translate rotate scale either of these means that rotate will be applied before translate so I'm going to choose translate rotate scale that means scales applied first then our rotations are applied then our translations are applied that means if I translate out in X we rotate first then I translate out in X that positions me out in front of the knee fantastic now that I have that position we can use that position for our twist control so I can right click on the output create a new null and this will become our L underscore leg twist underscore control. So let's create this null. I do want to turn off visibility and selectability of that orientation. Let's also do that for our aimer too. So we've got our leg twist control. I do want this to be a 
blue control object. And since it is going to be a control object, let's set our node color to be blue as well. I want the control type to be circles and I only want this to be an X, Y plane since we're going to rotate about the local Z plane. So I want this to be the X, Y plane. And let's boost our geo scale slightly, maybe something around about two, something like that will work out nicely for us so that we have a control that sits in front of our leg. And it's quite obvious as to that is a twist control. It's a large blue control in our view. I may even go as far as offsetting that slightly further, maybe 1.5, something like that. It's just a little bit tidier than it was before. It's a little bit close up on the leg with a value of one. So that will work fantastically for us. But you can see if we were to rotate in Z, we are simply rotating about our pivot point. I want the pivot point to move back to the twist axis. To do that, I can change the pivot in X of this control object. And you can see as we start moving the pivot in X, we're going to slide back along and eventually we would hit that twist axis. To calculate how far that we need to move to hit that twist axis, again, I'm going to use the origin expression. But in this case, I want to know the difference between my position in X and the position in X of our the position in X of our Amon null. The Amon null obviously lies in terms of the X axis directly on our rotational axis. Our current position in X is generated by our leg twist orientations position in X. So if we were to take our position in X and then work out the relative offset back to this position in X, that will move our pivot point back to the correct location. So we're going to use an origin expression in pivot X. I want to grab uh, leg twist orientation, that's who we're relative to. Who are we after? L underscore leg aimer. So aimer. Leg twist aimer, sorry. So we're going to be grabbing our leg twist aimer's position in X relative to the leg twist orientation. And again, position in X, that means we want to grab the translate X transformation parameter. If we do that, we can see that our pivot offsets back in X to that twist location. That means if we rotate in Z, we are going to rotate about the same axis as our leg would rotate. We can also see if we were to jump in, grab our IK handle and lift our IK handle up, we know that our twist will occur back down here. We can see our control object has indeed still staying out in front of our knee. And we can see that our pivot point indeed is offset back to the correct location. So that's all working out fantastically. So now that we've got that in place, I do want to go ahead and actually drive our twist by our rotate Z on this control. Now we can see that if I rotate this guy in Z, in a positive Z, we are rotating around, in this case, from look the top view, we're rotating around in an anti-clockwise direction. If I was to jump inside our chop network and grab an IK twist and apply a positive rotation, you can see that that actually rotates us in a clockwise rotation. That means I need to take the negative of whatever the control objects rotate in Z was and drive the IK twist for the leg kinematics with that particular value. So I'm going to take a negative. I'm going to reference a channel and the channel I want to reference is up and it's on our L underscore leg twist underscore control. And that is the rotate Z channel. So again, it's a negative of that channel. You can see indeed that did rotate us around to where our control was. But those double transformations are taking place. The double transformations are causing our control to be rotated both by its rotation and its parents rotation. We want to counter that rotation. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a null between our orientation and our control. So I'm going to right click on the output of the orientation, create a new null. And I'm going to rename this to L underscore leg twist underscore counter rotation and we can go ahead turn off visibility selectability i do want to make sure that the pivot point in this case is the exact same pivot as our control so i'm going to right click and copy the pivot x for our control object paste that in for our counter rotation so our pivot is in the correct location i then want to go ahead and copy the rotate in z so copy our rotate z parameter for the control and go ahead and paste that in as a relative reference onto 
Ah, uh, counter rotation, of course. We're countering the rotation. I want a negative rotation. That will bring us back round in front of the leg in such a way that now if we grab our control, the pivot is in the correct location. And as we rotate, we can see that our control is always facing in front of our knee. So that's zero that out. We can also take a look at what happens if we were to extend our leg up, causing the knee to bend. And we can see we have our control object. If we jump in, we can rotate. We're still rotating about the same location and we're still sitting perfectly in front of the knee. So that's all working fantastically. I do want to go ahead, grab our control object, and let's turn around and lock its translates. I also want to lock its scales. I'm going to leave the pivots unlocked for now. You're going to see in character rigging 2, when we come to actually set up the overall asset, I actually need to promote this parameter and then hide it because we need to have this particular pivot expression occur up on our asset and not just down inside the locked asset. Again, you'll see more about that when we set up the overall character asset in character rigging too. For now, I'm just going to leave this unlocked. Everything will function perfectly. And again, we only need to rotate on Z. So I'm going to lock our rotate X and lock our rotate Y, giving us only access to rotate Z. With that, let's just double check that everything we created in this video, apart from the control object, is indeed not selectable and not visible, and that is the case. And with that, that is going to conclude this video. Thanks a lot.